Uh, back down here on um, Zotz Canal, down the local cut for a few hours. It's uh, a bit blustery, a bit of drizzle in the air, but I'm sure we'll, uh, we should catch something down here, normally do. So we're coming, we're just going to walk up the river, as you can see, right up the river, up the canal. Got a bit of colour on it still because the rivers are well up. Um, but going on previous history, it fishes well. So we'll take a walk up and go up further past the pub um, and we'll see and we'll go through a few bits and bobs with you. Alright, see you shortly. So here we are, um, we've come up to um, Notre Peg. Um, well, I, I think it's, you know, it's a no-trip peg for me, it's probably not a no-trip peg um, for everyone because it doesn't really match which down here anymore. But anyway, come up to peg 12. Um, it's not much cover here, but it's, uh, the wind doesn't seem to hit it just here, so it's a nice little place to fish. We've got good markers on the far bank. I know it's roughly about five foot deep down the middle. The far side's about two to two and a half foot deep. Um, it's a bit narrower on this bit of towpath, unfortunately, we've just back down peg um, 10 and 11, it's quite a bit wider, so people tend to fish there, um, possibly why this bit doesn't get fished as much. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll have to side ship on here, I don't think there'll be many people up and down the towpath today, most people on um, down here seem to be quite obliging to us anglers as long as we are to them. Um, so yeah, I'll side ship, um, apart from when I'm fishing short. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're going to have a look at um, doing something a bit different today. Um, I'm going to try a bit of an experiment actually um, with filming um, to actually see it from my point of view as opposed to the camera just being on me in the distance. What I might do is um, actually do a uh, point of view um, just see what it's like and you actually see what I'm seeing on the, um, what's happening to the float how oh, I'm probably moving shot around um, and hopefully I'll do it subconsciously without the camera being on um, no one knowing the camera's on um, so hopefully it might be something that if it works we can do in the future alright so let's get some kits set up alright catch you in a minute set up um, not really like I say I don't think there'll be many people it's not the best of days it's a bit windy uh, plus it's wet the principle is basically all the same. We all carry a bit of kit, whatever. We need to keep everything clean and tidy on the bank. We should normally carry about. So uh, what I can do is um, do something slightly different. I'm going to mount you on top of my cap, and hopefully, think, um, so I've actually already set up a few bits. Um, so this will cross over onto whether you. Right, fingers crossed. You can see what I can see. So. Basically you're going to be fishing across onto that far side, we're going to put a line down the middle down there. Um, I'm going to put um, dead easy, so if we're fishing over Christmas and you can't get to the tackle shop or tackle shop shut, um, we're just going to fish bread down the middle with some dead, with a few dead pinkies and a bit of, um, a bit of emp in there as well. Um, so that's dead easy. Um, obviously thinking of dead pink as well. It's always worth if you've been out and about fishing, just get some pinkies, stick them in a bag, take the air out, pull it tight, chuck it in the bottom of the freezer, don't tell the wife or the girlfriend. Um, and then they're there for when you want to come fishing. So other bits and bobs, so punch crumb. I've um, done uh, punch crumb at home. I like to do a lot of it at home as well. I've made some ground bait up at home as well, done that last night, just put them in some bags, don't need to take a lot. Um, just for simple things, I knew where I was coming, so I knew what bait I was going to take. Most of us, unless I'm in a competition or something, then might be a bit different. I might uh, still make most of it up at home and then just tailor it on the bank. Um, but there we go. So that's uh, what I shall do. Is I always carry a couple of little buckets around with me. Even if I'm out roving around, I'll probably take a couple of little buckets. So ground bait. I've actually tailored this down. This is a bit of uh, bowling ropes black with um, just to knock it back a bit um, some vandenide special, which is a really fine ground bait, just to make it just um, 
a little bit less food content I've also run this through a flour sieve again just to take all the big particles out water's quite cold don't want to be overfeeding the fish all I want to be doing is just attracting the fish in so we'll just put a bit of that in the bowl don't want a lot this say so this is going to go out on the far line so I'm just going to prep my ground baits now before I show you some bits with bricks so put that in the bag out of the way so hopefully that is damp enough and as you can see that's damp enough just to squeeze into a little ball that's going to sink nicely I can squeeze that quite hard and then it's still going to break up on the bottom which is exactly what I want to that I'll add a few dead pinkies okay so you, so you can do exactly the same as if you're waggle fishing a couple more let's have a couple of more for good luck eh? um, I'm going to put a couple of casters in not a lot don't need a lot this is all mainly about smell and the other thing I'm going to add to this is I'm going to add a bit of chopped worm which I forgot to get out actually so we need to put back in the old bottom of the old bag that's if I bought it to be honest with you oh yeah we have I have a funny feeling then we have not bought any worm right so oh, the worm from the old nicked off the shelf in the shop that's today so again you can keep these quite well at home you know you know if you're buying from the tackle shop um ready for christmas and you know probably you're not going to get out to the shops but you still want to get out fishing and you want to go worm fi fishing with the old worm and um, best thing to do actually if you can i mean if people ask me i'll give them a hessian sack to put the worms in to keep them in keep them in the soil um use tea bags best thing i've found over the years it's something that was told to me a long time ago chuck some used tea bags in there obviously not hot um it just keeps them damp um and in theory it just gives them a bit of food to um, feed on so i put used tea bags in split the tea bag open right so worm scissors again handy bit of kit it's something oh, i've seen a lot of people not doing actually but you, all we're trying to do is create that that smell in the water something that's relatively natural and smelling so if it's been ducks or something ferreting around on that far shelf over there in that mud they might have with all this rain they might have um, knocked a bit of mud in the water it could have had some worms in for a week though so once these are properly mushed up so near enough proper mushed up and i heard some people say i'll oh, wash them off and wash all the mud off i don't bother with that i think personally that that bit of mud in there helps probably don't do the scissors much good but I can soon uh, sharpen the scissors up again or they're not massively expensive to buy a new pair to be fair those scissors are a fair few years old now probably could have cut with them up a bit finer but there we go right so that's that done so that's for a far side yeah right bit of punch crumb Going from the shop. No, use my other bucket for this. Um, all I've done with this, which I've done for years, which I like to do, is add a bit of spice to it. I know there seems to be a lot of this pre-made spice through nowadays, um, but it's nothing special. All I've added to this is um, cinnamon. Um, you could use all spice. You need a bit. I think I've added. You want to get technical about it a measure of 10 mil to one pint of um, crumb that's a little bit dry actually even though i've made that up that's sat all night it's a little bit dry to be fair so i'm not going to put it all in that's probably enough just to get a couple of balls out of there put the air out that bag put the bag in the bag so it's out of the way right as you can see, I've got my water carry down here. Damp hand, sprinkling. You can use one of them little atomizer things that uh, 
you see people using which is handy just swirl it round the only thing I did with this at home which is quite important when points come is when you do make it up make it up like that wet hand every now and again keep going in until it starts to come together then run it through a ground bait riddle take off any lumps don't force the lumps through just bin them just get rid of the lumps and then keep going until you get it comes to this sort of state and then I'll run that then because I'm at home and I've got loads of time I'll run that through a flower sieve to get it lovely and fluffy there you go that's just that's better in it might risk so I think that's going to dry at time we've plumbed up again let's run another wet hand through again see because I've run that through a first flower sieve at home and I'm not trying to tip loads in those water and that's still staying nice and fluffy okay hopefully you can see that quite well so that's staying nice and fluffy right other thing right we're fishing in roughly five foot of water now I want to try and get that down so this is quite quite an important little thing with um, punch clunk because it's so fine there's not a lot of weight so all I'm adding again we'll do something else we'll do in the shop a bit of grit um, I probably see all the things people talking about using grit from I don't know aquariums and things like that that's an expensive way around of doing it there you go it's a bit of, just adds that bit of weight to it that's all we're adding we don't want to add anything to it other than weight I mean we could add more and more water to add weight but I don't want to do that I want to keep it fairly fluffy so I can tip some in it's loose and I can tip some in it'll go all the way to the bottom right so the only other thing I'm going to add to that again is a, just a few dead pinkies and that is it nothing more so that's our punch crumb done okay right I'll right, put that down there out of the way hopefully it's still under the umbrella because it's now raining that's the other thing I forgot to get out which I'll get out in a minute I forgot to get my towel out right okay so as you can see we've got a coping kit we've got our far bank kit and we've got down the track kit so what I'm going to do now is probably going to be easier to show you down the track how old have plumbed up how I mark the pole up and as I say this is going to be exactly the same as it even if you're flicking a waggler out it's no different the actions of the way it plumbs up is slightly different because obviously with with a pole the line is running through the float and with a waggler it's through the bottom of the float but again if you jump back to a, a few videos that's on on here you'll see that I've actually done that in a glass tube and you can see how the mechanics of it all work so you just got to bear in mind if you if you're going to flick a waggler out to use um, a loose line um, and let it sit up right so if we look at this now one thing I do like to say to people is again it's probably I prefer it a few people say oh no you shouldn't be doing it you shouldn't uh, use um, heavy plummets but I use a heavy plummet no matter where I go because I find I can feel more what's happening and once you start to get used to it even with a waggler so that's a 20 gram fairly big flat bottom plummet so it's quite heavy people say oh it sinks in the silt yeah but if it's I find if it sinks in the silt I can actually feel that it's sunk in the silt because when I come to lift it up it creates a suction so I'm going to pick pick a reference on the far bank we're going to pick that reference of that tree just there next to the edge of that um, uh, what do you call them green ass so I'm going to pick that as my reference so all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, this shorter section of pole put that over there and then oh, I mean like I said I've fished this a few times now so I know exactly where the track is so what you're looking for is we're looking to not or not to take off with this wind they might have to put the brolly down if it gets too windy right so what we're looking for is where the river where the river well river or canal starts to shelve off so i'm gonna i want to fish to the bottom of that shelf down the track today down the middle right so hopefully you can see that so i'll lower this float in so there we go so we're can you hopefully you can see the bounce of the elastic that purple elastic coming out the top of the pole so we know that all the weight is on that line so if we lower that in so that if hopefully if I come to this side you'll be able to see that there is if you can see that that's on the bottom 
Okay, so if I go a little bit further out, now it's on the bottom and you see the float's gone under a little bit more. And again, there you go. So the float's gone down to the tip. And then we're keep going out, see it's gone under the surface. Now look, so obviously that's probably where all the boat traffic goes. And I'm gonna try and reach out. See it's come up the other side now, look. You can see that, see the elastic coming out. So it's actually come up. So the trough down the middle of the canal is about there. So I know if if I'm this is the accuracy with a pole you see. So I know that if I line that joint up with my bump bar there, that is bang on down the middle where the deepest point is. Which is, like I say, if you're using a rod and line, that is very difficult to do. It's more guesswork really with a rod and line. It actually, rod and line would probably work better in the summer because the fish are chasing around a bit more, don't need to be so accurate. So if I come back a little bit, you can see where I've plumbed up. So what I want to do, if I come back right the way back here, there you go, so that's that now, you can see the definite shelf. So effectively, because it'll be I think it'll be difficult to show you on the camera on the far bank. So effectively, the far bank will be doing exactly the same thing. So I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna try and find on that far bank. Roughly tend to find that the fish wanna sit somewhere around about two to three foot depth of water. So I'm gonna go when I go on that far bank, I'm gonna be plumbing around doing exactly the same thing, looking for around about two foot of water. Now bear in mind that this top kit that I'm on at the moment is five foot nine. So you can see what depth there is down the middle of this canal. It's quite a deep canal here at the Zoch. So what I've done, if I use the pole so you can see what I've where I've plumbed up, that pot that the pole is pointing to now is my reference. Hopefully someone won't come along and move the pot, but that's my reference of where I fish to, where I'm gonna fish to on the far bank. Now I've plumbed it up and I've found roughly two foot of water to two and a half foot of water from that pot across to that pot. And it does, it slopes down a little bit like that. So it means that I can actually fish all along there at different depths. So when I put my ground bait in, which I should put in at the deep point, because it's fairly loose ground bait, it will kind of roll down the bank, hopefully, it's in my, in my mind's eye what it's going to do, it'll roll down and create a better bait. So I can fish at dead depth, as we call it, that we've made, or I can move the pole along that far bank, and I can start bringing the rig shallower and shallower, because fish will come up off the bottom, or they might be on the bottom, but I can probably find them in that bit of water. That's the same as what we've done here. So we know that that is bang on the bottom. There's just a bit of tip showing. Well, actually, I'm gonna put my ground, because it is on a slope, I'm gonna put the ground bait somewhere around about there. So I know I can move the pole backwards and forwards and fish at the different depths of the canal without adjusting the rig. So as the ground bait hopefully spreads, because there's gonna be no boat traffic, today well I would have thought there'd be no boat traffic the bait's gonna roll down that bank down that deep trough so I can move the pole in and out I can try down there which is probably going to be under depth as you can see and I can come up here over depth and hopefully snare a few fish that way right so that's sort of principles of plumbing up let's bring this pole out of the way right I'll show you the beauty of I know that there's not many people about, no, it's nobody about. Right, so quick talk about the rig. So basically, I've got a little block of shot there and two little droppers. This is actually quite a short up link. Um, I'm fishing a size 20 hook, which is actually a um, comic eye booster size 20. Um, and one to eight for anybody wants to know. Um, uh, fundamentals of the rig, so this is a comic, um, yeah, it's comic Carrera, isn't it? I'm trying to think now. Um, so this is 0.3 of a gram, so it's quite a heavy float, but it's quite fine in the tip. 
the reason I want it heavy normally with bread fishing I want to try and get it get it down quite quickly because sometimes it, you tend to find it, the breadcrumbs come up in the water and you end up with loads of small fish coming in and we're actually trying to catch want to catch what we can but we're trying to catch bigger fish so that's that set up okay so we'll take the plummet off other thing to do now same thing again if you rod and line in it and just on the rod and line if you're all about thinking about rod and line with floats and probably look at fishing something like a couple of bb you can get some lovely little canal greys nice fine tips they don't take a lot of shot um, it's something we can cover another day uh, and go into uh, we'll probably come in fact we'll we'll look at coming down and fishing a rod and line down here and just see what the difference is so want to keep an eye right so so the only thing on these midi top kits is we've actually got the measurements so that's actually one and a half foot from here because I've put um, a cure adaptive um, bottom in this just to make it a bit, little bit longer so if you're actually measuring from there that's a foot and a half so obviously two foot two and a half foot three foot which is quite a nice handy gauge actually when you know when I was talking about earlier you want to be looking for those depths on the far bank so important thing to do so if uh, we break off or we want to make a few adjustments we're going to mark the top of the pole with a bit of good old tip axe now again something to do with rod and line as well so I always think oh I'll just mark it up with the nearest um, nearest ring on the rod that's all right but if you're like me after a couple of cups of tea and I've been fishing I tend to forget which one so it's easier to use a bit of tip axe always mark the problem is with this is poles down one there and one at the bottom of the float okay I don't know if you can see that right I know then break uh, if you break off break a hook link I mean all my hook links are all pre-made to a certain size but I, I can double check and I can make sure I can go back but the other thing it does is it means that I can actually slide the float down I can say right I take an inch off and I can add an inch if I want to dead easy I know exactly where I've gone to and I can go back to the exact spot of where I originally plumbed up now everything you probably notice sliding especially these metal stem floats up again whether it's rod and line or not if you're pulling down hold the bottom of the floats pull down if you're pulling up hold the top of the floats pull down if you pull down from the top of the float what you end up doing is nine out of ten times you just break the float and bend it and it's just trash i've got um, that's something that was left on there it's a back shot that was left from before don't need that today so quick check on that float because i've messed around with it right so all we're gonna do we lined up with that tree didn't we so i'm just gonna lower that rig in roughly with that tree Hold it straight. There we go. Give it a second or two just to settle itself down. Now I think, uh, if you can, hopefully you can see, uh, there's a lot of bristles sticking out of the water, an awful lot of bristles sticking out of the water. I'll try again to see, hopefully you can see. My gut feeling is on that is that needs a another shot on it so we'll bring that back in so i'll put that so the wind does not i can push it in the head slightly the wind's not going to blow it around all right so this is the important things of getting things right um I think a number 12 will do it. Now you might say, I can't put them on the bank. I'm no good. If you're no good at putting, if you struggle with shot, well, certainly round shot, it's actually easier to use um, the slot shot. The MIDI slot shot's nice because it's, um, it's quite soft and you can put it on without trying to bite it on. I'm going to put another shot just above the uplink 
actually, and then slide them slightly bigger shot. Put that away. So this is the beauty of having the little stomp float tires. Don't need to squeeze it on too hard. Just once nipping on. So I'm going to slide that. That, those couple of shots back up the line slightly so my dropper shot will be that number 12 that we've just put on that hopefully will just sit that float nicely get a bit of that bristle underneath the water plus if the bristle's under the under the water a bit lower in the water if the bread happens to come off because the bread will sink the float a little bit more float will rise up in the water because it's lost some of that weight so what I, because we'll let's just try and we'll try and get it right into that deeper water so we know that that float is about where it wants to be oh, that's just starting to settle now that's a little bit better isn't it now the time the bread is on that, obviously the bread will sell it with water and add a bit more weight to it. I should pull that tip under a little bit more. Throughout the day, if it's not right, I might just add another number 12 to that. Right, but I'm thinking that's about right personally. I'm sure nobody's around again. Always keep conscious of people walking. Especially with fishing the pole. The last thing you want is somebody trashing your pole. Right, okie dokie, so that's that, basically that's that rig, it's nothing special, um, if people want to know what line that is, that is Comic X5000 and a 0.125 down to a Comic Stream um, and that would be 0 0.09, which is probably a bit heavy for the canal but I know that there's some monster perch in here, anybody seen my uh, uh, Facebook post a few weeks ago you'll see that uh, catching a few big perch right so far bank um, comic center float as you can see that is roughly what we talked about with depth so I've took the I've got not got the Q-active on the bottom here we're gonna blow away um, so we're looking at uh, just over two and a half foot now I've not actually marked this with tip X because I'm near enough with these lines it's as near as damn it over the far bank over there um, that is a 4 by 12 so I think that's what's that point two over a gram little tiny bit of a bulk there and two droppers so one just about where that X is another one there um, and uplink size 20 again um, Again, exactly the same. I always use X5000, either 125 or slightly bigger on the rivers, um, and that'll be an 09 uplink. So that's basically that is it. I mean, if I was fishing a match, I'd probably set up a worm line and all sorts of bits and bobs. We're not doing that today, right? So just on the thing of uplinks again, right? So we're about I don't know 10 or 15 minutes in starting to catch a couple now I've had to make a quick adjustment to rig just weight wise I've just added another number 12 shot to this float so it sits I'm finding that I think because the water is so cold right it's quite hard to read so if that float is just sitting down nicely now something's just having a go at that it's just squatted down so it's just popped up in the water and it's gone down again fish on see with that little bit of a um, extra shot on there there we go nice little roach actually um, I can see the movement on the float a bit better which means I can actually see if a fish has took it and it, the float will rise up in the water slightly because it's took that that little that last little shot that extra shot I've put on has made all the difference. So little piece of punch. Not put any more bait in yet. Don't need to. 
that will probably keep us going for a little while to be fair I like to just tease that round so I find it's on just nicely and out we go again so, just got to watch this the wind is really starting to pick up now I did look at the forecast and they did say it was going to start gusting from about midday and it is midday now it's raining and it's got some proper kit on right so again if you're watching that float it's actually come slightly offline it's, it's gone under oh pulled out of that one but it's took the feet that's wedged in that tree so it's not blown around so we, let's try since I'm using white bread let's try white pinky now I'm going to hook this slightly different to what everyone else would probably do I'm going to hook this through the pointy end reason being is it, get, it stops it from masking the hook so much and it also keeps the hook proud obviously the blunt end of that pink is a lot bigger than the pointy end right let's just have a so we're lowering back in I'll in line with that tree over there lower 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 I'll probably just hold it for a minute just let everything straighten up dump the last little bit in interesting I want it just to cease whatever we might pick anything upside so this is the thing even if you're pleasure fishing if you've got a couple of different baits pointless flogging away on something that ain't working we're well, not that bread isn't working the bread's working quite happily but it may stop working and you also might find that you could pick up better fish with a different bait so we'll give this a couple of secs because don't forget obviously we put a few there you go it's just sitting down you see how that floats sitting down it's going and we're in so let's hold up see what we so that just proves a bit of pinky nice little roach little dumpy roach just up just in the lip excellent so we'll have a play around with that now we'll keep uh, trying those little bits and bobs obviously everything that's nice about pinkies is uh, you probably catch three or four fish maybe even more on the same bait so obviously with bread fishing if you miss a bite bread generally comes off um, and you normally have to rebate every single fish so on and out that I think is going to work might uh, especially if you're in a competition be a bit faster fishing a nice little skimmer on the old pinky now what I'm finding is the fish seem to be just mouthing the bait it's not really registering so I'm going to try taking tiniest little bit of depth off so just a little bit of depth and just see what that happens seems to be best do catching all right on the old pinky you put a fluoro pinky on this time instead of a white and we're gonna just see so back in and align with my format marker again nice steady lower in just took a little bit even though i'm fishing in that slightly deeper water I just wonder whether the fish might have come up off the bottom with that bread right so we made a f keep changing things around as I said earlier we've obviously measured this out further down we know that if I'm lining that joint up with my bump bar I'm right slap down down in the deepest part of the canal I've also just trying to a red pinky just keep trying those little even if you're pleasure fishing it's worth just making those little alterations moving around in the in the water 
So we're obviously already taking a little bit of depth off. We're also in the deepest part of the canal, so we're actually quite well under depth, really. So we're just trying to find out where the fish want to sit, and we might have to play around all day doing that, making little adjustments. So that floats just dipping under, let's see how that's just dipped then. There we go. Ah, I'm a bit too I was a bit too eager then. So then lower it in, lower, 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 hold, let everything straighten up and then finish the last little bit off. So this is a Folks, just started to settle now. I know it's just into the first little bits of that bristle. It's just going under now. You can see it's going under. There we go. Nice little short lift on that fish on. So I've been really mindful of this wind. I've had to put the take the pole. Look at that for a nice skimmer look. Nice. It's like a bit of a roach hybrid actually. So, red, red pinky through the tail, as I say. And hopefully, we'll have a few more fish. There it goes. I want to move with this wind. I'll be really, really mindful with the wind, especially if you're fishing the pole. Unfortunately, I've been on the end of a few broken sections this year mainly due to my own clumsy self and they're not even though you can get them repaired it's still money you don't want to be doing isn't it all right let's carry on see if we can get a few more another decent uh, nice roach so all the time while i'm fishing down here it's a bit difficult in this wind but i keep catapulting there you go and again keep catapulting um casters over on that far bank line just to keep a bit of bait going in constantly keep adding a little bit of bait so we're going to have a go over there shortly. Uh, since we're getting in our stride now with these little roach, lovely. A few of those for you today is nice isn't it? Right so we're fishing on the far bank as you can see now and now we're into something a little bit better. Uh, just trying to keep that pole low. Uh, I've had to move a lot of stuff around with this wind. It's uh, proving a bit of a, a bit of a mare, really. I'm just trying to take my time. Nailed so, so small perch to start with. Got some big perch across there the other week. There we go. Just hooked in the lip. Little fluoro pinky, that's a nice start, isn't it? As you can see, we've put a bulk up on this time, so we're going to keep tapping a little bit of bait in. It's going to be hard to, um, to get the cupping kit over there in this wind properly, so it's easier just to keep tapping in a few bits and bobs. Right, let's see if we can get any more. Right, so we're fishing about in line with that creamy coloured pot. Lowering in and tapping a few, tap a few casters in on that far bank. You may or may not be able to see that float, but I can see it just nicely. So it's a bit of a struggle with this wind. I know the fish are there. Just add that perch. And add. Float's just going dipped under again. Still there. I've had a, had a um, little tiny roach off that side, so I just keep building this up and keep uh, pulling away. Hopefully, this wind will stay down. It's dropped a bit now, but it was getting to a point where so I'm laying and try laying the rig in again. 
So if it's perched there, I might just try a little sliver of worm on because they're quite big size 20s. I want to try a sliver of worm. Right, so that's actually there's a bit of a slope that starts about where the float is, so about where the Baltic is pointing. There's a bit of a of a slope so this is a problem with the wind gusting I mean you probably notice our fish quite short lines my pole tip to the float it's just the way I like to fish actually there we go it's gone Ooh, I missed that um, mainly for st what I've come across is certainly on some canals especially if there's a, a bush or something on the far bank you need to try to float into them bushes without wrapping loads of line up I'm going to try and bury the float rod to, there we go and we're in again only just something small moving around 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 we might end up taking that pot off and just keeping the pole tip in the water just to uh, bury the tip a bit it's just the way I like to fish not for everybody a lot of people prefer to fish long lines right. Don't you tell that. watch this wind oh. let's take you back in the old sock so let's try Okay, we've not tried any big maggots yet at all. So I'm gonna try a big red. And hopefully there's enough. I just have to add a touch of depth to that about five mil above two and a half foot so I'm just going to have a touch of depth because obviously the weight of that that maggot's going to pull that float under right let's get back out so that's another fish on unless we so we we'll see we're trying to in red Again, be careful. We might have to give this. Oh, that's a lot of decent roads. That is. Yeah, that's what we like, isn't it? Oops. Trying to get up top in the landing there. Right. I'm going to use this opportunity to port a little bit of ground bait out. On that line, I'll put a little bit more out, but we might end up having to pack this far side in because of the wind. Great. So you can see the weather's starting to take a bit of a turn for the worst. So we've had a few fish up on that far line, but uh, holding a pole at that distance in this wind is. Is a bit awkward and it keeps gusting quite heavy so it could be a recipe for disaster so I've come down on I've not done that very well have I come down on this in inside again all I've done is literally just gone out potted out a nice loose ball of um, punch crumb And uh, I just put some dead pinkies out as well to be fair. It's back on the same line. And literally not not quite first put in but as near as damn it. Roach on straight away. So uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, we just wind up on this uh, punch line. 
and I'll start to point things away I think and go away, put feet up in front of the fire just give me some ideas to think about I don't think that punch so it's just dipped there look I'm not sure whether that there she goes oh there we go not massive on this punch line it's a bit awkward with the ship in this back here but welcome all the same now uh, rain's proper coming in now look all right let's get this fish on up and start looking at closing down all right this will probably be the last fish of the day now as you see i've had to put the umbrella up just to try and keep some stuff a bit drier we're into something that's half decent on the old punch and i'll be really careful because we're on quite light elastic plus it'd be nice to get this in that's proper I'm going to go with that is. Feels like a perch, but as I say, it is on. On punch, but perch being perch, there's no rhyme or reason to what the will and won't take. Right, let's try and get this section back of the pole out of the way so it's not going to blow around in this wind. Just trying to make a bit of a bid down there, look. Landing that ready. Could be a decent skimmer actually. Trying to put too much pressure on, just so our small ups light up with. Well, that's a decent fish, isn't it? I have a feeling it is a perch. Might be good roach. Who knows, this canal's just. Good old Zotch Canal, Good old some lovely fish in it. I really struggle a bit with this, with this light kit. Might have a big old perch. Come on, away from me, keep that. There she goes, we're in. There you go. How's that for a perch? Right. One perch. How's that? That's a cracking perch, isn't it? Beauty. Absolute beauty. Well, time to go home, I think. It is proper raining now. Um, so we've had not a bad day actually. So we'll see how the um, how this works with um, trying to do a little bit of um, point of view fishing. Um, we'll need to have a look through back look through this footage. Um, see how things are. So if you can like and subscribe, and then you'll be able to carry on following on what I'm trying to do. Obviously, don't forget to check out um, my blog as well, Stick Float wordpress.com um, you also find on there the um, my rig cards and everything that gives you all your shotting capacities of different floats and explains like bob 12s, bob 14s what the weights are and how to um, make the shotting capacities up to make those work so yes I shall um, see you soon take care everybody bye bye